The movie begins with the introduction of Professor Alan Hobby, head of leading robot manufacturer Cybertronics, who delivers a presentation on advanced robots, also known as Mecha. During his presentation, Hobby proposes their newest model, a robot child capable of experiencing emotions and love, similar to real humans, which will be marketed to couples who want a child that cannot obtain the license for a pregnancy. 20 months later, we are introduced to Henry Swinton, an employee at Cybertronics, and his wife Monica. Their son, Martin, is revealed to be in the hospital for the past five years, battling a debilitating disease. In a bid to help his wife cope, Henry decides to participate in the beta testing program of Cybertronics to test the company's latest creation, David, the prototype mecha programmed to understand and express love. Upon David's arrival, Henry and Monica are taken aback by his uncanny resemblance to a normal human child and his lifelike mannerisms. At first, Monica responds with defensiveness, feeling that her husband is trying to replace Martin with a mecha like David. With patience, Henry tries to persuade her to accept their robotic son and clarifies the process of imprinting. This involves activating a protocol to establish a deep bond with David much like the love between a parent and a child. Nevertheless, Henry cautions Monica about the permanent nature of imprinting, and if they ever choose to return David, he would have to be sent back to Cybertronics for destruction. Consequently, Henry suggests that they refrain from rushing into imprinting until they are absolutely certain about their decision. Throughout the following days, David persistently observes Monica closely as she moves around the house, intending to learn and understand. However, his harmless curiosity still leaves her feeling frustrated, prompting her to distance herself from the situation. During a meal together, David sits with Henry and Monica, intently observing their every action with fascination and mimicking their moves. In the days that followed, Monica regains her cheerfulness and becomes deeply attached to David, treating the Mecca child with the same affection and care as she would with any other normal child. Surprisingly, Having David around unintentionally makes Monica feel better when she's alone. Likewise, David also showers her with unconditional love and starts to mimic the behaviors of a real child. Moreover, in order to offer David extra companionship, Monica presents him with a robotic teddy bear named Teddy, which once belonged to Martin. Initially, things seem to be going well for Henry and Monica, but their situation takes an unexpected turn when Martin is cured of his rare disease. Over time, Martin begins to undermine David in the eyes of his parents, treating him like a mere toy. One afternoon, Martin asks his mother to read Pinocchio to them. This leaves David intrigued with the idea of a wooden puppet who was granted life by a blue fairy. The next morning, Martin manipulates David into eating spinach, resulting in a malfunction within him. As David undergoes urgent repair, Monica holds his hands, leading Martin to fear that his parents might love the robotic child more than him. In response to his insecurities, Martin devises a plan to exploit his parents' trust in David. So he manipulates David to cut off some of Monica's hair while she sleeps, falsely promising that she'll love him more if he complies. Following this incident, Henry suggests returning David to Cybertronics, emphasizing the potential dangers he poses. However, Monica disagrees and claims that David is more than just a machine and defends him as a child who is capable of making mistakes. During Martin's birthday, one of his friends starts to taunt David and tests his ability to sense pain by using a knife. This leads him to seek comfort and safety by hugging Martin, the only human he trusts in the group. However, as David grips Martin and inadvertently pulls him too far, they both end up falling into the swimming pool. Fortunately, the adults quickly intervene, prying Martin away from David's grasp and managing to revive him after the near-drowning incident. But as Martin is taken away, David watches from the bottom of the pool, feeling abandoned and isolated. This incident leaves Monica feeling increasingly cautious and unsure about David. However, her emotions are further complicated when she discovers heartfelt letters from him. Despite her conflicted emotions, Monica ultimately decides to abandon David in the forest, fearing that they would destroy the robotic child if he returned to Cybertronics. The next day, 
Monica takes David and Teddy on a trip to the woods, disguising it as a picnic. However, once they reach their destination, she musters the courage to reveal her decision to leave David forever. Heartbroken, David finds himself pleading and apologizing for all his actions, desperately asking if he could return home as a real boy, like Pinocchio. Regardless, Monica remains firm in her decision and abandons David in the woods while he watches her go. Elsewhere in Rogue City, a male prostitute mecca named Joe visits a regular client. However, upon entering, he discovers her dead, covered in blood. Just then, another man appears in the room, revealing himself as the one who killed the woman. Terrified of being implicated in a murder he had no part in, Joe hides in the forest and removes his operating license badge to evade the police. Meanwhile, David reaches the painful conclusion that he was abandoned because he is not real like Martin. He tells Teddy that he wants the Blue Fairy from the Pinocchio story to turn him into a real boy. As they continue his journey through the forest, David encounters a group of discarded and outdated mechas rummaging for spare parts in junk piles to mend themselves. And among them is Joe. Just then, an object resembling a hot air balloon approaches the scene. David, Teddy, Joe, and numerous other robots are captured and confined in cages, destined for the flesh fair. At this disturbing event, mechas are subjected to destruction for the entertainment of anti-mecha enthusiasts. At the flesh fair, the crowd cheers as old and abandoned mechas are destroyed. Teddy is picked up and taken to the lost and found, but he escapes and finds David in a cage. Just then, a little girl picks up Teddy and sees David thinking that he's a real boy. The girl then approaches her father, who's one of the programmers of the show. Shortly after, the show committee rush to the scene to ascertain whether he is human or just another robot. As they inspect David, the committee is taken aback, realizing that he is an exceptionally rare and more advanced robot in the market. While they suggest sparing him from destruction, Johnson Johnson, the event organizer, remains determined to destroy him. Meanwhile, in a desperate attempt to protect David, Joe ends up being forcibly dragged onto the stage and restrained alongside him. The showrunner then presents the two of them to the crowd. However, the entire crowd turns silent, conflicted upon seeing a child on stage. Then, as buckets of acid are poured onto David, he lets out a fearful scream. Hearing his cries, the crowd is convinced that David is a real child, horrified that the show will harm him. Outraged by the cruelty of the show, the audience starts protesting, which allows David and Joe to escape safely while the show fails miserably. Meanwhile, in Professor Hobby's office, the team reports that David was spotted at the flesh fair, assuring the professor that he escaped safely. After escaping into the forest, Joe learns about David's quest to find the Blue Fairy and leads him and Teddy to Rogue City. Upon reaching the city, they seek the help of Dr. No a program that serves as an all-knowing encyclopedia. They proceed to ask numerous questions about the Blue Fairy, but the device reveals that it is merely a character from a fairy tale. Nonetheless, it offers a glimmer of hope for David. If he persists in his desire to meet the Blue Fairy in the real world, he must journey to the end of the world, where a weeping lion awaits. With this new information in mind, David, Joe and Teddy plan to set out on an uncertain journey to seek out the weeping lion at the end of the world. However, Joe is troubled, knowing that whoever ventures there will not be able to return safely. He tries to convince David that humans hate them, but he insists that his mother, Monica, will love him if he's a real boy. Just then, the police take away Joe, believing that he ended the life of his client. David quickly takes a helicopter nearby and manages to rescue Joe. Together they make their way towards the end of the world and reach a city left in ruins underwater due to the rising sea level. In this desolate wasteland, David finds lion statues with water pouring out of their mouth and eyes. Nearby stands the tallest building, which they believe might be the home of the Blue Fairy. Inside the building, David encounters another mecha identical to him. Consumed by jealousy and fearing this duplicate could take his mother away, David destroys it in a fit of rage until Professor Hobby stops him. The kind professor assures David that he's a real boy, claiming that he is his Blue Fairy. He also explains that Dr. No's clues on finding the Blue Fairy 
were explicitly made to lead David to him. Afterward, Professor Hobby walks out the office to gather his team, leaving David to explore the office. There he stumbles upon several mechanical objects, as well as packaged David and Darlene units available for consumer purchase. This sight only aggravates David's despair, so he leaves the Cybertronics building to leap into the waters below, while Joe watches from the helicopter. Now, while adrift in the water, he spots a glowing figure in the distance. But before he can reach out, Joe finds him and pulls him away using the helicopter's extended arm. With a sense of urgency, David shares with Joe that he saw the Blue Fairy and that she lies beneath the water's surface. Just then, a police helicopter emerges and captures Joe, but he swiftly activates the helicopter for David to go underwater and pursue the Blue Fairy. Subsequently, David and Teddy pilot the vehicle deep into the submerged city, eventually finding themselves in the remnants of an amusement park. Unfortunately, just as David finds the Blue Fairy statue, a ferris wheel nearby collapses on top of their helicopter, trapping them inside. As his eyes focus on the Blue Fairy, David begins to plead for her to turn him into a real boy. Tragically, the collapse of one of the amusement park rides sends debris crashing down, striking their helicopter. Over time, the sea conditions start to change, gradually freezing around David and Teddy. Around 2,000 years later, the world is enveloped in ice, with the human population dwindling to near extinction. Here, the evolved mechas conduct excavations, seeking to study the remnants of the civilization and species that once created them. During their work, the excavation team retrieved David's helicopter, finding the boy and Teddy frozen in ice. They then delve into the memories of the two and are astounded to learn that David had once lived among humans. With this new discovery, they scan his memory to understand him and the planet better. After analyzing David's memories, the Mechas then construct a simulated reality of his old family's house. Once he awakens, David eagerly searches for Monica inside the house, but instead, he encounters the Blue Fairy. He then asks the Fairy to turn him into a real boy and reunite him with his mother. However, the Mechas speak to him through the image of the Blue Fairy, explaining they cannot grant either of his wishes. Poor David mourns, learning that his mother cannot be brought back, as Monica, along with all the organic parts of her, has long since passed away. Just then, Teddy reveals that he kept the lock of hair that David cut from Monica, believing that having Monica's hair should be sufficient to revive her. He implores the Blue Fairy to fulfill his wish, so she assures him that she can grant his wish and David is taken to his room, where he waits patiently. Afterward, an advanced Mecha enters the room, conveying its fascination with human beings. The Mecha then reveals that they wish to resurrect the humans, but their past attempts have been short-lived, as the clones would only exist for a single day. Regardless, David remains resolute in his wish to meet Monica once more even if it's just for a day. Honoring his wish, the Mechas then bring Monica back to life. Following this, David finds Monica in her bedroom, and she warmly greets the precious boy with a smile. Reunited with his beloved mother, David and Teddy spend the entire day cherishing each moment together. As the day draws to a close, he tucks Monica to bed, worried that she will not wake up after. She then tells David that she loves him, and he smiles with both sorrow and happiness. At last, David peacefully drifts off to sleep beside his mother, finally feeling content and at peace.